As we began this new week, this last week of February, I'm thinking of some words from Steve Forrest in his Book of Earth that I've been narrating as an audiobook. May you be granted work that is meaningful. Yeah, that is a great line. And he elaborates on that as he is talking about the sign of Virgo in this Earth series that I'm doing. What a great writer Steve Forrest is. As an astrologer, he's brilliant. As an as a writer, he's hilarious. He's funny. He's witty. He embarks all kinds of knowledge, a different perspective on everything. He's just great. And I'm expecting the audiobook that I did, The Book of Fire, to be released soon. And I'll let you know when that comes out. It will be on Audible. And uh, The Book of Earth is in the oven, as we say. So it's being done now. But yeah, to think about on a Monday morning, and he was saying, may you be granted work that is meaningful. Wow, there's a little bit of a, a gut check, isn't it, as you're getting ready for this new week, new day. And if you find that your work is meaningful, that is certainly something to be grateful about this morning. And if you don't, then maybe it's time to do a little bit of Saturn, Pluto, North, South, Node, <laughs> Mars, Trine, Uranus, and all kinds of stuff going on that maybe you need to do a shift, right? Maybe you need to just be in the space of asking the universe if there is something else. Do it very gently, right? That's how you want it. Let's do a quick roundup of uh, what's going on this week. Most of the energy is in place. We are going to have a, a planet change signs here coming up next week, but it's going to be a big one because Venus moves into Taurus. That's going to be a woohoo. So that'll be home. But right now, Venus is just trying to breathe in Aries's fire. <sighs> Venus is at 19 degrees today, moving as quickly as it can out of Aries. And by the way, if you were saying, now, why aren't you saying Venus? Shouldn't that be she? You said it. Well, I just am taking notes from Mr. Forrest. He's probably the top astrologer. One, it's certainly one of the, I don't know, you can't classify them, but he's certainly one of the top in the world today was saying, you know, the time of us giving pronouns to these planets is over. And I agree. We need and we use and we embody all of the signs and all of the energies, masculine and feminine, don't we? So yeah, Venus is headed on roller skates, skidded and greased with Crisco <laughs> to get out of Aries as quickly as possible, where Venus will promptly meet Uranus right at the front door of its own sign of Taurus. But those are going to be some happy three weeks. And get your money manifesting game on because when Venus hits Taurus, if you aren't spending every one of those days from March, what did I say? March 4 for about three weeks. So most of March should be dedicated to your money paradigm. Just mark that down and be ready and have something in mind some uh, ceremony or some kind of activity or some kind of program or just system that you're going to do while Venus is at home in Taurus. It'll be a year before we have that chance. So capitalize on it now. It's going to be a great opportunity. Right now, though, Venus is a little grumpy. Now, not major grumpy, but the two benefic planets in especially ancient astrology, the two benefics are squared up with each other, Jupiter and Venus, having a little cat fight right now because Jupiter is all like really massive grumpy in Capricorn. You know, like, got to spend the year there, my friend, got to spend the year there. It's going to be a long year for you if you have that attitude. Happy up, Jupiter, happy up in Capricorn. But... When Jupiter doesn't even have a friend on the block, I mean, Mars is a fire cousin, okay, but squaring off with Venus, mm, hurry, March 4th, <laughs> hurry and get here. Oh, by the way, did you catch the, uh, the new moon yesterday? It was at 931, I'm sorry, 1031 Eastern, 931 in the central part of the U.S., 
and it was in Pisces at four degrees. Now the moon is still in Pisces at 16 degrees. If you did not catch that, we did a quickie little podcast on it yesterday. That's there for you. You can catch up on exactly what the energy was like, but that energy will still be somewhat in place today. And you can certainly still do your ceremony or your exercises just like you could have yesterday. Go for it. Now, we haven't talked about Saturn-Pluto for a while. They are three degrees separated. Pluto takes so long to go through a sign. 24 degrees. I mean, the the uh, conjunction was at 22. So, you know, we got at least one degree progress. But Saturn is at 27. So Saturn moves into Aquarius. I believe it's March 22nd. So between now and then, that gap widens. Now, I mentioned yesterday that there were a couple of these little minor grand trines, these minor uh, aspects involving sextiles and trines. So what we have is Mars is in a trine, that's 120 degrees, with Uranus. And Mars is also in a 60-degree sextile with the Sun, and Mercury would be in there too at 8 degrees. So Mars is sextile Mercury and the Sun. That's good. Maybe maybe that will offset retrograde a little bit, you know? Mercury's trying to be the trickster and maybe Mars just kind of slaps it into place, hopefully. Maybe that would take maybe that would be it. But there's also a sextile with Uranus. So Mercury Sun sextile Uranus trine which is trine Mars. Uranus is trine Mars. So there's one. The other one is the Sun and Mercury, of course, in Pisces now sextile to Uranus in Taurus, which is also sextile the North Node in Cancer, which is trine back to the Sun and Mercury. So there's your other little of these many grand trines. So there's two pyramid-shaped triangles in the chart. So the one I just mentioned, Sun, Mercury, Uranus, North Node. The other one, Sun, Mercury, now at the top of the pyramid, not at one of the base angles. And then the base is Uranus and Mars. So there's just a lot of subtle, nuance type energy in the chart right now. You know, it seemed like late last week there was some grumpy in the chart. And now it seems like there should be, if I'm reading this right, there should be a little more happy in the chart. Now, with the sun and the moon in Pisces, which will be to, for the rest of today, you got today on this, The spiritual perception is just off the charts. I'm going to do, voice permitting, I'm going to do a subconscious mind mastery podcast in the next couple of days about what I'm doing with that. Now, of course, that energy will move on, but there's just, when you catch these little subtle things in the chart that we point out like this, mentioned it yesterday, it's there today that you can really take action on this soul work that you want to do. And I had a big, big, big one yesterday. Right at the time, I stopped narrating right at the time of the conjunction and the new moon and just spent about an hour working on this one issue that I wanted to deal with in my life. And boy, was the the insight, the plans, the steps, the Uh, just the connecting with it. And I'll try to do that when I do a subconscious mind mastery podcast on that. I have been talking about this on that podcast really since I'd say last fall. So the episodes, if you scroll back and look at the menu of things that are there since last fall, a lot of those have been dealing with this process and how we've been handling it, both Majana and myself. So that is there for you. Great opportunities to do this work is the bottom line of all of this. And since one of our little mini grand trines involves the North Node here today, it is definitely one to jump on because think about it, the moon and the sun and Neptune in Pisces connected by a trine to the North Node in Cancer. Now, if that doesn't say go do your spiritual work and may you be blessed with work, that has meaning (laughs) and spiritual work too. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.